on October 25th, 1995, my husband, Alan Goldberg, and I uh, went to George Washington University Hospital at, near our home in Washington, D.C., to have our very first child. And um, I had had a very uneventful pregnancy, and so we were just excited and curious about whether we were going to have a boy or a girl. Early that morning, our son, Henry, was born, and within moments of his birth, the doctors picked up a heart defect, and they whisked him away and put him into intensive care. Several hours later, the, a doctor who I'd never seen in my life came into my hospital room and explained to me and my husband that our son had something called Tetralogy of Fallot, which is a very serious but correctable heart defect that would require open-heart surgery. It was a shock, and it was scary. Um, and they called in geneticists and others to to give Henry sort of a, a serious um, examination to see if there was anything else wrong with him. Two weeks later, we found out the name um, of, of that disease that they were looking for, and it was called Fanconi anemia. And Fanconi anemia turns out to be a Jewish genetic disease that my husband and I, who were both of Ashkenazi Jewish descent, were unknowingly carriers of. So when we passed along brown hair and brown eyes and dimples to Henry, we also gave him this horrible disease. Fanconi anemia also almost always leads to bone marrow failure and the need for a bone marrow transplant. And the um, kids in the Ashkenazi Jewish population with Fanconi tend to have earlier onset of bone marrow failure and need to have their bone marrow transplants by the time they're five. This was overwhelming information to get as we held this two-week-old baby in our arms who looked completely healthy. The type of Fanconi that he had, the type that runs in the Jewish community, um, back in 1995 when Henry was born, the bone marrow transplant survival rate was zero. Unless there was a brother or sister who did not have the same genetic disease and was a perfect HLA or bone marrow match, if we were able to have another baby who would be a perfect bone marrow donor for him, his chance of survival was upwards of 90%. When Henry was six months old, we got a call from one of the many doctors who we had met with sort of in pursuit of a cure for Henry's disease. And she told us about a brand new medical procedure that had never been tested before, but that they thought could guarantee us at the moment of pregnancy that we could have another child who would be free of Fanconi anemia, and also would be a perfect bone marrow match to Henry. Um, what she was proposing was that there was a, a doctor um, actually at the time here in Washington, D.C., who had figured out a way to combine in vitro fertilization, but where they could extract a single cell from the embryo before they implanted it in the uterus and be able to test that cell for the presence of the disease and also for HLA typing. And the idea was that they, um, while the embryos were still in the lab, they would be able to pick the one or the two that were healthy and perfectly matched to Henry, and I would become pregnant. And at birth, they would take the um, stem cells from the umbilical cord blood, which are typically thrown away as medical waste at, at, you know, at any birth, um, and they would use those stem cells to transplant them to Henry and to save his life so there would be no harm to the baby. We were among the very first in the world to try to use pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, PGD as it's more commonly known, to try and create or, or select a baby that would be healthy and a perfect match to an existing child. And over a period of three years, my husband Alan and I used P tried PGD nine different times to try and save Henry's life. But a mix of technological failures and statistical improbability and bad luck doomed us to failure. When Henry was four and a half, his bone marrow failed, and we had to proceed to transplant without a perfectly matched sibling donor. Henry had a transplant from an unrelated donor and lived for two and a half years um, with a lot of complications and also a lot of joy in his life. In, in, during his life, we, we were lucky enough to be able to get pregnant naturally with two additional children, our sons Jack, now 13, and Joe, who's now 8 years old. Um, and we got lucky, and they were born healthy. But at, at the age of 7, Henry died of complications from, from his transplant. He was one of the most vivacious, 
spirited, happy children that I've ever met in my life, let alone to say he was the most courageous. <laughs>